For those of you who grew up with Fortnite, you might not remember the times when smartphones were made out of plastic. The Galaxy Nexus, the iPhone 3G and the T-Mobile G1. That era of smartphones was a sort of transition period between ones that were smart and, well, ones that weren't. These days, it's hard to find a recently released handset running either Android or iOS that isn't made out of metal or glass, or more commonly, both. I'll get comments telling me that glass and metal aren't premium materials, but these people clearly never used the Galaxy S2 through S5 for extended periods of time. Modern features like curved glass, wireless charging, IP ratings and build materials like glass, metal, polished ceramic, stainless steel and titanium are leaps ahead of the dreary, flimsy plastic of, let's say, the Galaxy S4 for example. But when did this transition really happen? Well, Samsung has included metal and glass in their S line since 2015, and Sony has had it in their Xperia line since 2013 and Apple since 2010, and while I think it would be fair to hand this a tribute to Apple since it kind of acted first, I happen to believe that we wouldn't be here today if HTC of all people hadn't shaken up the game with their One lineup. Up until the fabled HTC One M7, Android was known for running exclusively on poorly made, poorly supported handsets. iOS on the other hand was being run on the iconic iPhone 4 and 5 platforms. Sure, Apple likely had a big hand in showing up its competition, but HTC acted on it and made a phone that shook up the industry. Not only did it have a 1080p screen and boom sound speakers, but it was also housed in this gorgeous aluminium unibody that radically contrasted with the leading Galaxy S4 Android smartphone at the time. Two years later, Samsung launched the Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge, the latter of which brought in the experimental Edge concepts that the Korean firm had been testing in its Galaxy Note 4 Edge platform. This changed everything. Suddenly, there was a mainstream device on the market with not only an incredible Quad HD AMOLED display and a great camera, but a curved Edge screen, premium glass back and wireless charging. This incredible fit and finish is still easily reflected in the current Galaxy S20 series half a decade later. Even at this point, the larger iPhone was still largely unpolished thanks to touch disease and bend gate, LG's G4 was still plasticky and cheap, and HTC's One M9 was iterative to say the least. Samsung was making waves, but it wouldn't be until 2017 where things would go crazy. LG started off the year strong by releasing its G6, which would be a massive leap forward from its flop of a predecessor. The glass and metal build was perhaps not all that new, but the 2 to 1 aspect ratio, rounded display corners and tight top and bottom bezels all played into a rugged yet beautiful design. This wasn't just a design change, this was a form factor change. Just under two weeks later, Samsung unveiled a device that would change the way we see smartphones today, the Galaxy S8. This followed the same kind of form factor change that LG had introduced to the industry, but did it on a completely new level. The silky curved edges had gone from an option to a staple of the S flagship, and you could now get the standard or plus model. The curves were now on the front and the back, the side rails were more seamlessly integrated and molded into glass, and my gosh did it turn heads. It wasn't perfect, and tech publications expressed their concerns pretty clearly, but it would only be a year until the company refined and polished their device to create something that's possibly one of the best devices ever made, the Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus. But before that, let's not forget the niche and wacky devices whose features would become the norm in a lot of devices that we see today. Xiaomi had its awesome Mi Mix series that featured extreme bezel deletion and included materials like polished ceramic. Oppo had its Find X with a motorized pop-up camera, which was featured in a different way on the Vivo Nex S, but we'll get back to those in a minute. Apple released the iPhone X to mixed feelings due to the brilliantly made device, but with a pretty big compromise sitting right at the top of the display. This was at a time where you could pick between a top bezel or a notch, and Samsung and Apple took wildly different approaches to this. But in 2019, Samsung and OnePlus showed that there were other ways of doing things, and to say that they lent into these new techniques would be a gross understatement. 
Samsung unveiled its implementation of Infinity O, which had previously been debuted in an A-series device. This is something that you might find in a lot of 2020 devices such as the OnePlus 8 series, the Oppo Find X2 Pro, the P40 Pro and several mid-rangers even. OnePlus on the other hand was leading into the pop-up selfie camera, which it went on to use in the 7T Pro as well. This approach meant that you could have a fully uninterrupted display with small bezels, but at the cost of longevity, ingress protection, and of course, the speed at which you can actually launch the camera. The pop-up camera has since been scrapped by OnePlus in favor of the Infinity O punch hole, but you can still find it otherwise in the Poco F2 Pro, Oppo Reno 2, and Redmi K30 Pro. Along the way, the Galaxy A series would pretty much pioneer mid-range smartphones with glass and metal housings. Just look at something like the Redmi Note 8 today. It's cheap at around £150 and comes with heaps of features along with those cool build materials. Even the cheapest phones today have skipped plastic for these more premium components. But that's not always a good thing. There has to be a balance. A company should take into account its pricing and marketing strategy and then make a phone that best fits that purpose and that is going to sell. The reason why the Poco F1 and Pixel 3a were so good in the mid-range is that they cut out glass and metal, arguably unimportant features, for better features and better specs, things that those markets really do care about. And it goes the opposite way. For those who near enough have unlimited money, we have ultra premium devices with folding displays, wraparound displays and those that just straight up cost a lot of money for the sake of it. But it's smartphones like this, like the Mi Mix Alpha, like the Mate XS, the Galaxy Z Flip, that change how you perceive smartphones and that really do push the design game forward. Under display fingerprint scanners, pop-up selfie cameras, rounded display corners, curved glass edges, these all stemmed from unique niche high-end devices that we first called stupid or unnecessary. Look at how they've trickled down into the phones that you and I use today. Smartphones have come a long way in the past 10 years, and so has pricing, although maybe that one is not such a good thing. And I feel like you really do need to look at how devices were back then and how cool they've become now. I don't know, maybe I'm overly appreciative of tech that we have, but for those calling glass and metal not premium, here's my case. Anyway guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video today. It's a bit of a voiceover, a bit of a funky one. I know this one's come out really late and it should have been put out on Thursday, but I kind of spent a lot more time doing the, the implementation of the clips and the animation, the voiceover, that kind of thing. And I wanted to polish up the script a little bit. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Please do like, dislike, comment, subscribe to never miss a video like this one. Also check out my links in the video description. I want to give a massive shout out to my patrons and the cars going past for being uh, brilliantly, continually supportive. So thank you so much. I've been Ryan Thomas, and I'll see you later. Peace.